everyone, welcome back to my channel and you're watching The Brown Feminist. And in today's episode, I decided to take you guys along with me to work. So you will be living a day in the life of a clinical trial coordinator as I work in a hospital-based research institute or CRO. Now, without further ado, let's get into it. Now, of course, since I manage multiple clinical trials and different projects, no two days are really alike. But I decided to actually record on this day because I was going to have a pretty standard day where more or less my whole day was focused on one project and one patient follow-up. So this is basically how my day starts is I say goodbye, I head out, and as I'm going to work, I start kind of planning all the things that need to be done. Now, because today we do have a patient coming in for a follow-up treatment round, that means that I've already had to work for this day for a whole week before it. What that means is that I actually had to do a lot of pre-planning, make sure that a treatment room was booked for this patient when they come in, patient transfer services were ready to pick them up from the community where they're residing currently, um, any kind of approvals are done. If the patient would not have been able to consent for themselves, I would have had to take family permission. In this case, I did not. So I made sure the patient was aware of it. Any kind of nurse or healthcare provider who are caring for them, or maybe like a support person who kind of comes in to check on them, had to be aware that the patient would be gone from say nine in the morning till 5 p.m. at night because they have like a very intense therapy going on all day as part of his clinical trial. Now, I also had to make sure that during the hours that the patient is not in their daily routine environment, any kind of medications they had scheduled are sent with them, any kind of meal requirements, um, the kind of feeding or like dietary requirements, any kind of sitting or lying down support that they require, ambulation devices are sent by, and I had to be sure of what their DNR status is. Even to transport a patient from one place to another, you need to know what their DNR status is in case, God forbid, they begin to code and people around them need to be aware if it is a DNR or is it is a full code, which means if something happens, should they be revived and should all kinds of measures be applied or should they be allowed to kind of, you know, naturally allow the body to do what it's doing. So after collecting all of these information and collaborating with various departments, both outside the hospital to bring the patient in and within the hospital um, where I had to book treatment rooms and make sure any kind of investigational drugs are prepared, talk to pharmacy, talk to nursing, talk to the physicians who are investigators on the clinical trial, talk to the patient's normal physician or um, specialist who are there under to make sure that they're actually currently physically and emotionally capable of sitting through a whole day of treatment under a clinical trial and then doing all of the necessary advanced paperwork and making sure I had everything, then I could actually start my day because all of this work had to be done from a week in advance. Now, once I went in, of course, there is a lot more paperwork to get ready. A lot of assessments have to be done with the patient. Sometimes you do it electronically. I always like to have paper copies ready. Now, that allows me to not be too distracted trying to log in or find a computer or be limited to one space. And if the patient just wants to have a conversation while we're doing these series of assessments, which can be very tiring for them, I want to be able to focus with them, take quick notes, and then later on do my data entry. Now, on this typical day, I went to the hospital, I did my usual thing, I had my patient running, I had all kinds of assessments completed before their treatment could really begin. Once treatment started, I had to, of course, be present and make sure there were no adverse effects, there was nothing to report, the patient was tolerating it well, and that in case they were not tolerating it well, there is a support system present and everybody is aware what kind of potential side effects could arise and if they did, how they would be managed. And what that means is that the nursing staff on the floor, some of physicians, for example, residents or fellows, or attendings who are on the floor on that day are aware that this patient is around. Maybe they don't need your attention right now, but just in case something goes wrong, you're kind of present and you're kind of in charge. So after having collaborated all of this, I had a wonderful day um, dealing with my patient and doing all of these assessments, like I being able to like see like their progress as they're recovering from a um, pretty severe uh, condition, which actually led them to enroll in the study to begin with. 
and I was able to hand him over to patient transfer services again so he could be safely transported back to the community where they reside. Now, after all of this, um, I actually was not done with my work day. I then came back to my desk and I started my actual clinical research data work. And that means after a whole day of actually conducting the treatment follow-up, it was now time to get all of this data from these sheets where I had noted them down into the EDC, the electronic kind of data capture system, which has like very standardized um, ways of collecting data from multiple sites of a clinical trial. So I went type, 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 and sometimes this information was missing. I had to go back and ask the person who did the assessment. Sometimes for the same patient, portions of the assessments are done by a physician. Some portions are done by nurses. There might be a physiotherapist, a kinesiologist. There might be blood work, which is done by the lab. So different elements really fit in. And only after you have all of these information in your hands, can you really sit down to enter that patient's data. Of course, by now I was exhausted and I had to go and take a break. And today I did not go walk over to the cafeteria. I just ate at the lunchroom, which was right next to our office. After a much needed break and rehydrating myself and feeding myself some good home cooked meal, it was time to kind of get back to the grind. Now, a lot of my work involves running around to different departments to make sure I have all the correct paperwork and the signatures because these are regulated clinical trials, which means, for example, in the US it would be the FDA, in Canada it would be Health Canada. They're obviously like all involved and every kind of um, you know, trial can be audited at any minute. There are also pharma sponsors involved who can come over and send their study monitors over. So everything has to be a, properly filled out with the proper documentation techniques but they also have to be signed by all of the appropriate people who have reviewed them. So a lot of my job, of course, today was running around to different buildings of the hospital and then near the hospital, making sure I had all of the right signatures from all of the people involved, whether it was making sure like health and safety had checked off, whether it was make sure pharmacy had checked off, the physician or the study investigator had checked off, um, any other nurse who performed any kind of assessment or in intervention had checked off. All the timing and everything was correct of when the drug, you know, giving the drug started, when it ended, how the patient responded, and all of that had to be collected. So sometimes you will see me running around the hospital with like a bunch of stack of papers, which have all of these like colorful sticky tags saying, sign here, sign here, sign here, sign here, read this, review this. Um, and I'm just basically running up and down the hall quite a bit. But after all of that was done, I had put everything in my investigator's binder and entered all the data that needed to be entered um, and made sure that everything was proper and it was done. There were no errors, there were no queries. And I called in to do a little bit extra as a clinical trial. This is not something you have to do, but I really like to call back into the community or into the residential um, care home where patients live and just speak to the nurse and make sure because um, being outside of their community for long stretches of time, even for trial treatments, can be hard on people, especially if they are ill or if they have comorbidities. So I like to call in and check in and say, so this is how their day went. Um, were they doing good? Was she was she healthy? Was she eating the same? Was she feeling excessively tired? Did they have a you know good transition back? Was were they there on time? Is uh, you know is she too exhausted or is he too uh, fatigued after this day? And just make sure that everything went nice and smooth. The final thing that I like to do, and I don't always do this on the same day, sometimes I do this on the next day, but that is I send out a thank you email to all the different departments who I had bugged all week to make sure they all performed their unique roles in this clinical trial at the exact same time. The assistant who booked my treatment room, the pharmacist who prepared the investigational drug, the nurses who made sure like the you know, ECG machines were functional and in the room, the person who was a phlebotomist who came to take the blood at the right time, the physician who came in and do, did like certain specialized assessments and all of these people, the research assistants, I send them individualized emails to say, this is how the day went and I thought it was great. Thank you so much for doing your part. It couldn't have been possible to go so smoothly without your help. And if there's anything that you think we can improve from next time to make this process more efficient and like less hectic, please do let me know. I would love to keep on improving our processes. So a lot of the times it just, there's no feedback. There's like, no worries, it was my job. And sometimes we get very valuable feedback for the next time because these trials can be really hectic. 
um, when people come in from like different um, who are not inpatient and they're coming in from um, other either other branches of hospital or other types of community or other residential centers or other rehabilitation centers and that can be a huge logistic mess to coordinate and being able to do that means that you definitely had a lot of help with a lot of key people who were in a position to help you who could just as well have made things difficult um, so i do like to take the opportunity to thank everybody and only then did my day end and I walked out over to the bus stop to make my way home. And that was basically it for my day today. This is one of the semi-typical days in the life of a clinical trial coordinator. I hope it gives you a glimpse into what it might be like. It can be a little bit hectic, although there are other days which are more focused on like paperwork and logistics and data analysis and grant renewals and ethics renewals. So I will definitely be doing more videos like this, but focus on some of the other typical days. So I hope this video has been fun for you to watch. And if you have any questions, feedback, comments, please don't, please don't forget to list it down below in the comment section. And if you like my video content, please do hit subscribe. I'm really trying to see if um, I should be making more content for this channel. Thanks so much. This was a Brown Feminist. Bye.